Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Do you have any of this in your stash? This is Friendly Plastic. It looks kind of like a Jolly Rancher, kind of like how they used to come for 10 cents at the corner store. Remember that? Um, but it's plastic, so don't eat it, obviously. But um, it's been kind of popular lately. The thing is, though, if you have the old stuff, it's very brittle and snappy. Whoa, did you see that? Part of it just flew past the camera. And it really isn't useful for the new techniques that are popular right now. But if you have this old stuff, there are still some techniques you can do with it that are pretty awesome. Um, I have a big bin of this old stuff that was given to me from a shopkeeper, it's actually my sister, who, um, it was old so she couldn't sell it, so she gave it to me to see if there's anything I could do with it. I made this cute little brooch right there. I think I'll pop a picture up on the screen so you can see it better. And um, it was really fun to work with. So there are limitations, but there's still a lot of really neat stuff that you can do with old friendly plastic. I'm going to show you what today. So let's go to the table. Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Uh, today I want to show you just a really fun technique um, using old friendly plastic. Now friendly plastic has uh, become very popular lately and you may have some in your stash from years gone by and you may find that it is brittle and chunky and kind of hard to work with. So I'm going to show you today how to use old friendly plastic. It's really not useful for a lot of the really fun new techniques but um, there's no point to throw it away when you can make something cute out of it. So first I've noticed the old friendly plastic does not cut very well and I can show you I've got a pair of shears here. If I try to cut it, it kind of wants to splinter and crack on me. You see that? The newer plastic should cut a lot smoother. So what I like to do is actually just break some pieces. And what I'm going to do is break some pieces and I'm sitting them down here on this um oop, I got a price tag there. On this hot plate. It's actually just a coffee mug warmer that I use to um well actually I use it to melt a lot of stuff, but it does keep my coffee nice and warm too in my cold basement studio. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of build a little mosaic. And what I did, this little, um, on this coffee mug warmer, I actually took a hot glue mat. Um, it's got holes in it because it was used as a eyelet setting mat too. Um, and I just cut a circle out of it to fit. And I'm just setting that on the hot surface because the, um, the silicone mat there is heat resistant. So what I'm doing is just kind of making a little bit of a collage here and the heat from the coffee mug warmer is going to be perfect for melting it down. And I'm just kind of doing one layer. That's a pretty mother of pearl here. You can actually color your friendly plastic with um, nail polish or alcohol ink. It's really fun. You can see the back of these bars, they have a 99 cent price tag on them. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is 99 cents. And I did price it, I looked around, because I wanted to play with some friendly plastic. And it's about um, three bucks a pop, three bucks a bar now at, uh, at Joanne's anywhere online. Um, but I haven't been able to find it anywhere near me, so I'm just kind of playing with these old scraps and seeing what I can make. You can see that as it heats, the surface of the plastic gets kind of mottled. This might be a little hot for it actually, um, and I will remove it from the heat once I see that it's all kind of gotten good and melty. And I am kind of fiddling with it and pushing it in because I don't want to have any holes. And I haven't had any classes on how to use friendly plastic. I've watched a couple videos. Um, what happened actually was um, my sister used to use it a lot and she had a little craft shop and um, she had this big bin of it that was all broken and she asked me if I wanted to have it because she couldn't sell it so of course I you know love free crap so I took it and it's been kind of my mission to figure out how to use the stuff. I have broken some chunks up and put them in silicone molds and just heated it with a heat gun and um, that works really well too. That's something else you can do with old friendly plastic. I just think it's fun to kind of experiment um, with all the materials rather than toss it away. I mean, look at all these yummy colors and metallic finishes. They're just really pretty and fun, and I didn't want to get rid of it if I didn't have to. Um, and then maybe I can, you know, maybe once I've worked down the stash a little bit, I'll use it on some other things. Uh, what I have here is just some fondant cutters. Uh, 59 cents at Martin's. <laughs> if you're from Maine, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but when I saw these, I didn't exactly have an idea in mind for them, but I knew at 59 cents I would likely use them. I really like these little leaf ones, and I'm going to use these, the star cutters here on this and make some kind of patriotic stuff since I have red, white, and blue going. Now it's just about all evenly melted. I could use a heat gun if I wanted to for this technique, but um, this will be a little easier for you to hear me if I'm 
using this. Also, I'm going to get a little cup of water handy so that I can dip my tools in it and also dip my fingers in it if I need to because the, the uh, your hands won't stick. If you have water on them, it's not going to stick to the plastic. So I'm just going to get a little dish, what I have handy, and I happen to keep a little jug of water under my workbench, you know, in case of fire, in case I need to douse something. It's always handy to keep a fire extinguisher. I honestly do look within reach. Fire extinguisher, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> you just never know where my crafting is concerned. All right, so got a little... See, so I can actually kind of touch this if my fingers are wet and it's not going to stick to me. Now, most of this has melted. I'm just kind of waiting for those last few pieces I put in there to melt. And then what I can do here with this needle tool is I'm actually going to dip it in water to make sure it doesn't stick. And I can kind of just marbleize. Isn't that fun? Once it gets um, really workable and really melty, I could take it, take the silicone mat right off of my base. But I just think it's really fun to kind of play with it and make some patterns and colors and just, it also kind of tones down the red, white, and blue. So it's just, it's kind of there, the colors are there, but it's become a little more abstract, which is it's fun because sometimes, you know, your your strong, pure colors can be a little gaudy. And this just kind of blends it down a little bit and you have this really pretty marble pattern. And it doesn't take any effort at all, as you can see. So then, now that I've got it pretty well worked, I'm going to turn off my little coffee pot warmer. And I'm going to move my mat right down here onto my silicone mat. Now, I want to get a nice big star out of there, so I'm setting my star cutter into my cold... Uh, water and it, well, it would be room temperature, but my room is pretty cold, so it's pretty cold. And I'm just gonna shake off the extra water and let that set for a second, and then just press it right in the middle. And I think I'm just gonna leave it there while it cools, so I don't end up disturbing anything. So what I'm gonna do is turn the camera off, and then we'll come back after that's all cool, and I'll show you what it looks like. So our um, little star has cold and you can see that I've got a really pretty marble there kind of a random marble and then I played with it a little bit more and did some more like um, traditional marbling and I kind of came up with these different charms and I even used this frame by taking made this frame by taking two cutouts two cookie cutters and putting the bigger one down than the littler one inside so I had a lot of fun playing with this and I found that if you take out the cookie cutter before it's completely um, cool, you can actually get the frame as well and the frame won't break on you. And again, I'm using old friendly plastic, so I don't think the newer stuff would give you that much trouble. This was just kind of like a free form. I started mushing it around into a shape on the, um, on the mat and I wasn't in love with this, but my daughter really loved it. And then, so she made this and she put some baking crystals in it, which really has a nice glittery look. It's really cute. And then she made these two pieces. Um, as well. So it definitely can be used for all ages. Just, you know, you're working on a heart surface, so you want to be careful with that. I will show you that traditional marbling too, I think, in a second. So what I've done here is I want to have a background for this because I have a feeling that these might not be the most durable. So what I've done here is just pushed a couple pieces of black together and heated it up. And then I want to kind of smush it together. So I'm going to use this palette knife. I'm going to dip it in cold water. And I'm just going to kind of scrape the edges in so I end up with a uniform size. It's really gooey. It's been on this mat for a few minutes. And then I'm going to dip my uh, spatula in again so I can cool it off because it's not going to stick if the, to the wet, cool surface. I'm just going to clean up the edges and let it melt down a little bit more. Pretty easy. Alright, then I'm just going to remove it from the heat. Put it right over here. And let it just kind of kind of get a little bit warmer. Now something else I wanted to try would be to add a little gloss to this. And what I'm going to do is end up layering it on there, but I think I might even want a little bit of a glossy coating. And I can do that using embossing powder. So what I'm going to do, um, actually I'm not going to put it on the heat mat here because I don't want it to get too hot. What I'm going to do is heat it with a heat gun and sprinkle it with um, embossing enamel. 
Here I have a jar of ultra thick embossing enamel or UT and that stuff lasts a long time I have to say. I'm just going to set this aside for a second and grab my heat gun and I'm just going to heat this up. Um, actually, you know what, first I'm just going to tap it with an ink pad because I don't want to get it too hot and melt my edges away. Now I can, as I'm working, sprinkle the embossing enamel into it, but it gets really slick and slippery and sometimes it blobs over the edges and it just doesn't have the, uh, the look I'm going for. So what I'm going to do here is just press it on my uh, glycerin ink pad here, just a clear embossing ink or you can use glycerin, just something to make the powder stick. And then I'm going to scoop right over the jar, try to be careful with it because I don't want to have a bunch of um, embossing enamel on the outside to deal with, so I'm just doing the top. And I have a nice even coating there, I think that's going to be all I need. And I'm going to put it back on my um, little scrap of silicone mat because I don't want it to blow away and I don't want it to stick to my, um, my paper. I'm going to just lightly hold it down with that needle tool and I'm going to heat it up. Now I can give that another coat if I want, but I, I just wanted to round the edges over a little bit and make it um, just a little bit glossier and more professional looking. It does give it a little bit of glittery. It brings out the glitter in the uh, in the foil and the friendly plastic, so that's kind of a nice effect. Now I'm going to set this aside to cool off again. I'm just going to kind of wet my finger and touch this and see if it's still soft. It's still soft, so what I want to do is add a little texture to this. And I have an embossing folder with just kind of a random, it's one of the Tim Holtz circle ones, it's just got kind of a random pattern. So I'm going to spray this with water so hopefully it won't stick to my um, my friendly plastic. I'm going to give it a good, I'm just doing this off camera, but I got a spray bottle of water and I'm giving it a very generous coating here because I do not want it stuck to my Mac because I have a sneaky feeling that it's, if it sticks then it's going to stay stuck. Then I'm just going to peel it up hopefully. And we've got a neat texture there. It is a little messy, but that's fine with me. And then I want to embed some wire into this. So I'm just going to set this aside. I don't think I'm going to need to heat it right back up. I'm going to take this, uh, this red wire and kind of bend it. Well, let me just bring that back over here so I can get an idea of how long I want it. I'm going to use my uh, round nose pliers just to make some loops. You could use a wire jig if you had one and you wanted to. But what this is going to do basically is add a little reinforcement since this is um, older friendly plastic and will tend to be brittle. This is just going to give it a little bit of reinforcing. So I think I'm going to have it kind of go corner to corner. That's why I wanted to kind of push this into a rectangle and make it kind of pretty because I knew I wanted to do some something a little fancier. I'm going to give this a little snip and then spiral in the edges. Nothing fancy. You could get really fancy with the wire if you wanted to. This wire is just from like the floral craft section of the dollar store. I like to pick up wire when I see it cheap because wire can be expensive and it fluctuates a lot of time with, um, you know, with prices. Whoa, that was lucky that didn't stick in there. Now I could press it on like this, but I think I want to flatten it. I don't want to add too much bulk and I don't want this poking through my star. So I am going to use my little mini horn anvil right here, or if you had like a vice bench or something, if you had like a clamp or something with a steel top, you could actually just hammer it on that. I'm going to hammer this right here. You can see my metal is nice and flat now. It's actually hardened too. It's going to be less flexible and offer me a little more protection with my, um, with my piece. And this is heated up a little bit, so I'm just going to kind of press it in as well as I can. And then I'm just going to blast, I want to blast it with a little bit of heat. I want it hot enough so I can sink that in there and I can adhere the two pieces of friendly plastic together. But I don't want it so hot that, um, that I lose the definition. So let me just kind of place it together the way I want it. I really like the look of that. And I'm just going to try to center my heat right here on this wire. I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best. Boy Scout motto. Alright, that sunk in. I did lose a little bit of my texture, 
So what I'm going to do is just kind of quickly go in there with my embossing folder again. I am going to just spritz a little bit on the edge and just kind of press it in there very quickly to give a little bit of that texture back again. If you have to go in and poke down a, a peak, you can just go in with a, wet your finger and go in with that. Let's see if I can get a little bit more there. There we go. I like that. Okay, now this is still hot, so I'm going to stick my star right on there. Just like so. I'm going to make sure I'm making contact with it. Now I want to add a little another decoration. Uh, a little another. A little another. Sound like my kids. I'm going to add a little decoration to the front. And I think I want to do a little wire wrapping and um, use some beads. So I've got these little alphabet beads here. And I have a USA, a couple hearts, and a couple little um, rectangles. And I have a spool of skinny wire. And what I'm going to do, I like to work from the spool when I work with wire and when I work with ribbon because it just saves you from wasting by having to cut off from both ends when you're done with the design. So what I'm going to do is thread on first a heart. I'm just have to keep, I'll have to keep an eye and make sure I don't thread anything upside down. It'll be right set up to me. It'll probably be upside down for you. So I got my heart and then I want a bead, one of these little uh, pretty clear beads with a red lining. I think it's a blue moon bead. And then I'm going to do my A. Or you could spell it a name or something, but I just wanted to keep this kind of generic. And my S. Goodness gracious, I can't find the hole. There we go. Hey, there's my furnace kicking on. It's like four degrees outside right now, so. Whee! Winter! Whoops, I use upside down. For goodness sake. There we go. And then another bead. And then we have another heart. Ah! Thank goodness this isn't a beading video. You definitely wouldn't be getting your money's worth, even though it's free. Alright, so I got USA there. I'm just going to do a little uh, spiral here on the end. I could just let those, those uh, go where they want to go because they are... Um, they're on the spools, and I won't cut it until I know how long I want it to be, until I get this little spiral done. Flatten it as I go. I am doing a really awful wire working job here, so please do not, uh, <laughs> do not use this video as wire working, um, whatchamacallit, wire working tutorial or inspiration. Alright, I got a little spiral, a little wiggle there. That's about what I wanted. And then I'm going to snip it, give myself a, well, about an inch to work with on this end to just kind of spiral and wiggle. I'm not going to worry if it's, um, if the wire is crooked because I can flatten it out with the uh, smooshy part of my pliers. That is a technical term, the smushy part. I guess I could have given myself a little more wire there, but I am really not going to sweat it. It's only a piece of jewelry made out of old friendly plastic. Okay, so I can put that right across my pendant. Let's see, do I like the look of that? I'm not even sure I like the look of that. But that's what's great about experimenting and trying. Because otherwise, you'll never know. I think I want to kind of curve it around. I like that much better. And to adhere this down, I have a couple options. I can heat it and sink the beads down into the surface. Or I could use a little hot glue, because the glue will help uh, will help bond that in. As long as I don't go too crazy with it, it's not going to melt it. Or I could use um, any any adhesive that's that's appropriate for plastics. I could just do the beads to the friendly plastic. I don't even have to mess with the wire. Um, I could even use a little Helmar. Why don't I use a little Helmar 450? I bet that would work pretty well. I got it right here within reach, too. I don't even have to go across the room and then edit that bit out. That's often what happens. So a little behind-the-scenes secret for you there. Oftentimes, I for, like I forgot my UT and my ink pad. So those little bits where it looked like I had it and I just grabbed it, I actually had to run across the room and grab it. There you go. My secret is out. That's all right. I can't have you thinking that I'm, like, perfect in Martha Stewart or anything. <laughs> like, they, like, anybody thought that. I don't think anyone would have, uh assume that anyway, but just in case you did. 
It's a little Helmar 450 here, which is what I like to call my um, my cold hot glue because it it works just like hot glue. I'm going to adhere this right side up. And then all I have to do is put a pin back on there. When this is completely cool, it's going to pop right off of this um, of this backing. I told you I would show you the just traditional marbleizing, so why don't I do that? I grab my little coffee mug warmer again. I had it sitting dangerously close to my polymer clay. Don't want to be curing anything by accident. All right, and I'm just going to randomly put down some um, shapes. I really think this is kind of a pretty color combination. The red and the purple and the peach, which you think would be kind of tacky, but I think that's going to be a cute little charm for a card. Maybe if I have an act together, I'll have a I'll have a card that I can show you on my blog when I post this video. It's a big if, folks. So this is, like I said, old friendly plastic. I'm probably going to get people from Amico calling me saying, that was old, you used that old horrible stuff and you showed our products and they were old, but I'm, I'm disclaiming it that it is old, but I, I hate to throw stuff away when, um, when there could be a use for it. Hence my basement looks like an episode of Hoarders. My craft room looks like, looks like an episode of Hoarders, but I digress. So basically I, I kind of work it like a mosaic because I can't cut these and get a uniform a uniform cut. It, it shatters when I try to cut because this is old. I do want to clarify that because I don't want people to think that this product is bad because it's it's fragile. It's just because I'm using old stuff. And I also don't want angry emails from the friendly plastic people. That would be awful. I'm just trying to show you how to use your, your old stuff so you don't have to throw it away. The friendly plastic was pretty popular in the United States probably about 10 years ago, and then it just kind of fell off the face of the earth. Then it came back about two years ago, being popular um, overseas, and uh, so everybody was kind of getting excited about it again and digging out their old stash. And if you're in that situation and you haven't been able to get anything useful done with it, at least you have a, at least you have something you can do with the old stuff before you invest in in some new. And if you've never tried it and you invest in new stuff, it's going to be like a piece of cake. I think I'll throw a little bit right there, and just be careful not to go off the mat. This mat was used at one point for as an eyelet setter, so this hole, so it does kind of drip through sometimes, but it's really not a, not a big deal. So why don't uh, we come back in a couple minutes, and um, we'll do the marbleizing. That way you don't have to watch this melt, because watching friendly plastic melt is probably like watching paint dry. But notice how it's all glossy here. When it's melty, it's gonna the, the surface is going to be less glossy. All right, you'll see that in just a minute. I'm even going to zoom in close. Oh, I'm so fancy today. And we're back. It's probably about two minutes later, and the edges, I can see the edges of my plastic have kind of um, rounded over a bit, and uh, I got kind of, it's not so glossy. This one here um, is not completely, the surface is not melted yet, and you can kind of see, I'm just going to lift it up. The silicone's not too hot to touch. Um, if you look here, I've got much more of a mirror image on this purple piece, and if you look over here, the rest of it has a little bit more of a... Um, Gosh, it's more of a shimmer than a mirror. So when it goes more to like a shimmer, then it's it's the surface is heated as well. When it's um, when it's more of a mirror, like we have here on the edge, that um, and I'm, I'm wondering if you can see that a little bit better. If I get that in the light there, you could probably see it a little better. When it's more of a mirror, it's not quite hot yet. But when it, when it goes to like a shimmer, like it is over there, then it's nice and hot. So that's gonna need. Um, Maybe if I move it around, I'll find a hot, uh, better spot. This is just a coffee mug warmer. I think I mentioned that before. I can even move the part of the, um, the stuff that's already melted out of the way and get that in the center where it's going to heat up a little bit better, and you can kind of see it going to more of a shimmer now. Um, but I like this because not only will it keep my cup of joe warm, I can also use it to melt all sorts of things, and I don't have to invest 40 bucks on a melting pot, which is nice. The only downside, of course, is that I can't adjust the temperature. I kind of, you got what you got, but to adjust, I would just remove the plastic from the uh, the surface, and that would just kind of, that's kind of how I'd regulate it. Um, I'm not fancy. I'm not Martha Stewart. I don't need a melting pot. I'm fine with this. Um, so we are almost, yeah, where I could see it almost melting on the edge there. Um, what I'm going to use is a couple of cookie cutters here. What I hope to get is one heart that I can use for scrapbook uh, embellishment and two little stars that I can maybe use as earrings. So that's that's what my goal is for this piece of plastic. Um, I could take this right off the warmer at this point because it's warm enough, but I think I'll just leave it here. I think we'll be good. So what I want to do, to do a basic marbleizing, if you've ever made like a cheesecake, 
I've never made a cheesecake, but I hear tell. You just want to make a few lines right through the plastic going one way. Now I can just rinse off my, uh, my tip in some cold water and uh, scrape that off. There we go. You might not want to do that if you have a fancy manicure. And then I'm going to go between the lines and go the other way. Now you can see how you start to get that classic marbly look. I think I'm going to go over my first lines because I don't really dig what they're doing. They're kind of, probably because I'm still on the heat. Let me take it off the heat. I think that's why it's still, why it's shifting on me a little bit. And do that again. For those little holes in the mat, I've got a little bit of a plastic situation on my, <laughs> on my coffee cup warmer. Not a big deal. And you can, of course, just go back and forth if you want, like I am here. Because it's just crafting, folks. It's nothing fancy. Now, I think that's just plain gorgeous. It's like a little chevron goodness going on there. So then I want to kind of eyeball where I want my cutter. You have a little working time here. It's not like it's going to harden like hot glue. It's not. It stays warm for a bit. Um, so I am just dipping my um, I have a little heart muffin cup that I sometimes use to melt stuff in. So I'm just dipping that in that cold water. My basement's cold, so therefore the water is cold. It doesn't have to be ice water or anything. And I am just going to position this into my plastic. I'm going to give it a good push, and I'm going to leave it alone. Now I'm going to try to get... Um, you know what though? I can't get two of the same shapes. I just realized because um, because I need to kind of sit in there for a minute. So that was poor planning. I don't have two of the same cookie cutter. So what we're going to do is just get a couple more shapes out of this if we can. I'll get this little heart here. And maybe I can squeak a little star in there. Because I don't like to waste. Sometimes you can uh, work it so that you end up with a pretty frame. Like here, um, I used two cutters together to make this frame. And here, I kind of saved this because I thought it might be kind of cute on a card. But if it was bigger, it would have been prettier because I would have had a really nice frame. On the star one, I, I waited too long. I waited until it was really cold and I popped it out and it shattered on me. So, um, so to speed this along... I can kind of dunk this into some cold water, but I think I want to let it set for a couple minutes, maybe a minute or so, just to make sure I don't ruin it, because the bottom layers are going to be really hot still. So I'll I shut the camera off, and we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so it's roughly a minute and a half later, and I did dip it in my water a bit, and got a little patient, and kind of pulled it out before it was ready, and uh, did end up marring my heart a little bit, but I think it'll still be fine for a... Um, for page embellishment. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of bending the background because I figure if I want to fracture anywhere, it's going to be in the background. I don't want to um, fracture my focal object. So I'm just kind of bending the background away. And then I've got that cute heart charm. This is how it, how it would have looked if I didn't um, lift it up too soon and, and you can see some of that black showing through. But still, you know, not bad. And um, then I've got these little pieces here that I want to pop out. And again, I'm going to pull off the background piece because I want to make sure that my the items that I've molded or cut out uh, came out well. And oh, here's a little star that I did. So there you go. There you have it. If you want to use this in a mold, I'm going to show you how to do that too really quick since, you know, I'm just kind of showing you all the different things you can do with friendly plastic. So if you want to do a mold with friendly plastic, you need to have a silicone mold um, because silicone can take the heat of your heat gun. So let me move all these pieces out of the way. And um, what you're going to do is break up some of the friendly plastic and put it in one of the molds. And I would try to get a, a friendly plastic that's got all the same colors. And something else you could do is actually dust this with a little bit of like Pearlex first if you want to. It probably will end up getting mixed up with everything, but it's just something that you can try. What I'm going to do is just grab a little bit of this gold. Actually, it's eyeshadow. And I'm just going to dust my mold with that just to see what happens, basically. Um, I thought I had a couple of these done to show you, but then I forgot I used them in um, my sister's European scrapbook, so they're not here anymore. I've already uh, used them for embellishments. They're really pretty, though. Okay, so I just did that for fun. You don't need to do that. I just thought it'll be a nice, a nice look. And what I'm going to do is use a few colors with white backgrounds. Um, or peach backgrounds. Now this is pretty, this peach, so I'm just going to break it up into some small chunks. And I'm going to try to keep the foil facing down because that's really the prettiest and I want to make sure that shows. 
Oops, let's flip that over. Now I'm going to give it a little heat because once I have a little bit melty, it's going to be easier to stick the uh, the other stuff, the new plastic into it. Or the each each additional bit of plastic. No, my plastic is new. It's all old. Kind of hold that in place. Ah. Wet your fingers if it sticks to you. <laughs> this uses up quite a bit of plastic, so, you know, it's really great if you want to use up a bunch of old stuff. Not so great if you want to conserve. But once it's cool, your embellishment's ready to use, which is nice. Now, I think I want to add something else to that, but I want to make sure that the background color is going to go. I could add some of this red, metallic red. The red and peach will make a lovely rose color. This is a great way to use scraps, too, if you have a bunch of little bits and pieces left over from stuff that you've cookie-cuttered out. You could, um, you can add them in here, use them up. I would use some of this, except I got a lot of black in it. I don't think I want the black. The backgrounds are black on the on some of the colors, and I don't really want that black in my flower. But it, but if I had something else to mold, that would be a great a great option for it. Put a little bit of this white in there as well. Heat it till everything gets good and melty. I'm pushing the um, melted plastic to the edges of the mold with my needle tool. I'm stirring it up. This will Give me a pretty marbled look and will also help fill in the crevices in the mold. Alright, I think the backside's pretty with all the uh, swirliness. Hopefully some of that has gotten to the front. I'm just going to um, do that just to kind of help out any air bubbles and also help the uh, plastic fall into the mold. And now we have to be patient and let this dry, let this cool off, I mean, um, because it will take a while because it's pretty thick in there and it's gotten really hot to the liquid stage. So it's going to take us longer for this to cool than it will when we were just using it kind of in a semi-liquid stage, if that makes any sense. Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to come back when it's done and show you the results. Okay, here we are back at the table. It's been about 20 minutes since I turned the camera off. This is still warm to the touch, but it's nice and firm, and I'm going to be able to pull it out. I really love the marbling swirliness on the back, but if we pull it out, you can see you really can't see too much of that in the front because I didn't stir it enough, but what I do have is a lovely kind of gilded look because I used that dollar store eyeshadow on there. I'll give you a look at that um, that container too. Just, again, just this is the uh, just the LA Colors dollar store, family dollar and dollar store stuff. It's a buck, obviously. And I brushed that in there. You could use Pearl X or Perfect Pearls, but the nice thing about this is I can rub my hand on it and I don't get any gold on my thumb. So this the Friendly Plastic really locked in that pearl powder, which is really really cool. That's going to be beautiful on a vintage card, I think. And if I mac together, I'll actually have the card done when I do the video. There's a big if there, folks, though. Um, so I was just kind of playing while my coffee mug warmer was still hot, and I just kind of crazy quilted some pieces together. Now, honestly, I should have let it, I should have shut the coffee mug warmer off and left it there to cool, because when I picked it up, I did um, kind of crunch up the, uh, the gold, the kind of foil on there, 
Um, so it does have, it's not going to be mirrory shiny, but it still has a really cool look. So basically I just took some broken scraps and pressed them together and let them meld in. And as they melted, you can kind of see where the black cracks are. It kind of just kind of filled in the gaps between the shapes. So yet another thing you can do with old friendly plastic. Uh, you should really give it a try. It's a lot of fun. But if you have the old stuff, why don't you try to use that up first before you go and buy the new. I gotta tell you, I'm itching to get some new friendly plastic so I could try the really cool bead techniques that I've seen. Um, but I think I'd like to use up my old stuff first because I don't want to get the two mixed up. I want to make sure that I know what I'm using. Again, I want to show you my daughter's beautiful uh, pin here that she had um, <clears throat> that she had put the baking crystals into, which is really cute. And um, my pin here, I'm kind of it's on my sweater still, so I can't pull it out too far. I just got to put a picture up of that. Um, but it was a lot of fun to work with, and I do urge you to give it a try, especially if you have old stuff in your stash anyway. So there you have it tips for using old friendly plastic. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.